On the show today, we talk to a man who doesn't know the meaning of the word no. A successful professional turned entrepreneur. We are in conversation with Dr. Rana Kapoor, CEO and Managing Director of Yes Bank, the fastest growing bank in the country. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Let's trace your journey. You were a professional, you turned into an entrepreneur, and today, as I said, the fastest growing bank in the country and fourth largest private bank. Uh, what's your journey been like? You know, the journey has been uh, absolutely fantastic. Uh, I don't, you know, complain about any parts of it, even though there were some bumps on the way. From the time that I worked as a professional executive for almost uh, 18 years, and then having turned into a major, I became an entrepreneur, a professional entrepreneur, way back in 1998. And uh, it's been uh, basically a roller coaster ride. At the same time, it's been uh, very satisfying, very rewarding. And uh, particularly at Yes Bank, the last eight and a half years have been absolutely magnificent in seeing this little baby bank, you know, come up the way it has to acquire institutional character, a pan-India outreach, a headcount of over 6,000 uh, professional executives with the owner, manager, partner uh, ethos. So it's been very, very satisfying. But the switch from being a professional to an entrepreneur, what was that like? As a professional executive, uh, there are many wonderful things that happen in a very programmed and predetermined manner at times. You're working within uh, certain boundaries. At the same time, you know, if there is a pent up desire to be an entrepreneur, uh, to make it on your own, then the transition from a professional executive, in my case, to an entrepreneur was a relatively easy crossover because I was somehow not doing enough and as an executive. And I had this burning desire to really move on and do something on my own. And that dream was basically to create, you know, a financial services institution. And uh, it happened in two phases uh, in my case. First one was more like a build, own, operate, transfer model, where I really worked as an entrepreneur on behalf of a Dutch bank who wanted to establish their presence in India. And that got transferred uh, at a time when, you know, I got the banking license. So it's a, it's a very good feeling, you know, to really emerge as an entrepreneur. And I wish I had started at least 10, 15 years before it. You know, when people become entrepreneurs or did at that time, and even today, they think about manufacturing, they think about technology. When you think about starting a bank, uh, that takes an entirely different kind of courage and perhaps vision altogether. See, my basic grounding at Bank of America, where I spent 16 years, was predominantly in commercial mid-market you know, banking with exposure to a relatively small retail bank. At least in India it was small, but in US and California state, and at one time it was the largest retail bank in the world. Uh, yeah, my transition into investment banking was because I felt that you know, I needed to really hone my skills to develop uh, skills for sunrise sectors in India, for project finance, structured finance, for M&A, uh, because those were the needs of the hour in a India which had begun to reform in the early 90s. So investment banking skills are very important for a banker to acquire. And I think that was, a, that was like you know, entrepreneurship on the job for me. So I honestly really enjoyed my assignment with ANZ uh, Greenlays as the head of investment banking for about two and a half years. Uh, and then I continued in a semi investment banking format at uh, Rabo India Finance between 98 until almost end of 2003. And uh, even convinced them to take a large stake <laughs> in the bank that you formed. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, you know, on So you don't really burn bridges either as you go along. You're very good at relationships as well. Well, you know, uh, end of the day, if you have to be a successful entrepreneur, you know, building a network, business, social, and otherwise, and keeping very strong relationships, uh, strong interpersonal, is a very important ingredient. So I have, uh, through my 33 years now in banking, tried to maintain, if not deepen, inner relationships. 
So yes, you know, my uh, ex-partner Rabo Bank did come into Yes Bank. They made a killing on the stock. Now they are fully out, having made about $400 million of gains. So they did pretty well. You know. <laughs> they, they did very well, no doubt about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, when you started the bank, when yeah. you had a vision, <clears throat> you had yeah. partners, yeah. you had family with you, you faced loss. How did you manage to go on? See, to begin because with... Because it was a kind of joint yeah. vision to start a Not bank. really, actually. The bank was a lot to do with, you know, me and a professional team. Because it was conceived, you know, uh, with a breath of fresh air, as a non-legacy institution with a lot of, you know, energy, I would say contagious energy, and uh, in an institutionalized sense. So from day one, uh, I was given a free hand by the board, by my investors, you know, uh, institutional and otherwise, to really conceive the bank. Do you have the IndyTV Profit app? All the markets, all the news and your own homemade, ready-made portfolio available there for you. We will right now answer what you should sell, what you should buy when markets are down. Download at IndyTVProfit.com slash apps. Get the best app from the channel you trust.